Wow Church Easter 2014. Wow! Luke chapter 9 verse 51 tells us that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He knew that was where he was going to die. Jesus knew that that is where his, his mission would be accomplished and that his true identity would finally be revealed to all. But what was Jesus' mission and what was his identity apart from being the son of a carpenter from Nazareth? We start this Easter series by looking back through the Gospels and seeing together what Jesus' mission and his identity were and are. Firstly, his mission. Luke writes in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 42 to 44. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry on earth. These verses at the end of Luke chapter 4 tell us that his mission is to preach God's kingdom. A reluctant John the Baptist baptized him, and the crowds heard God the Father speaking to him, and saw God the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Jesus underwent temptations by the arch-seducer Satan, and he emerged victorious from that ordeal. Now Jesus, led by the Holy Spirit, has returned home to Galilee. Jesus is back in home territory. And because of the power of his teaching, he is becoming known as a great teacher. Luke chapter 4 verse 15. Jesus spent some time in Galilee, became known, and is now arousing the interest, the curiosity, and the excitement of people. And worshipping, it was Jesus' habit to attend public worship wherever he was. And he would have worshipped as any good Jewish man would have done at the time. A typical synagogue service consisted and opened with a prayer for God's blessing. Then there was the traditional Hebrew confession of faith from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and chapter 11. Then there was prayer and readings from the law and the prophets. And then a brief talk was given by one of the men or a visiting rabbi, as in Acts chapter 13. And finally there was the benediction or prayer. Because of his growing renown as a teacher, it is no surprise that he should be asked to read the scriptures and give a short teaching session regarding it. Here in Nazareth, Jesus declared that the day for demonstrating God's salvation had arrived and the day the prophets had been looking forward to was going to be fulfilled. Fulfilled in Jesus Christ himself. Luke 4 verse 20. He was the servant. Isaiah had talked about long ago in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2. Jesus' ministry was divinely directed. It was a ministry of hope for all people of all time and a ministry to free the spiritually oppressed. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And when Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, Jesus was referring to the year of Jubilee. Leviticus chapter 25, where every 50th year, this special year was the balancing of the economic system. Slaves were set free and returned to their families. Property that was sold back to the original owners. All debts were cancelled. Lands were laid bare to rest and rejoice in the Lord. The local reaction was at first one of great astonishment. Luke chapter 4 verse 22 and telling each other he was the son of Joseph, that carpenter. But Jesus was not the son of Joseph, but rather the son of God, the new Adam, and the founder of a new humanity, as he goes on to explain. The people saw him as a son of Joseph, the carpenter. 
admiration soon turned to anger because Jesus began to remind them of God's goodness to the Gentiles. The prophet Elijah bypassed all the Jewish widows and helped a a Gentile woman, a widow in Sidon. And Elisha healed a, a Gentile leper from Syria. And whilst those in Nazareth could only see Jesus in the local setting, he told them his mission was for all Israel. And if Israel rejected the message of good news, then the Gentiles would be blessed by it. Upon hearing this, the astonished admiration turned to fury and rage and anger and wrath. Salvation is now no longer restricted to Israel, but for every child of Adam, every human being. Jesus' mission was not to be Israel's saviour alone, but the world's saviour. And when Jesus quoted the proverb, no prophet is accepted in his hometown, he revealed his knowledge of Old Testament history, for he knew that God's messengers often were rejected, and even as God's son, he was rejected as well. Jesus' mission, was to be the saviour of the world as God's son and the servant of the Lord. His mission was to give a message of hope for the spiritually poor and the spiritually oppressed people. Not only people in his hometown, nor in his country of Israel, but rather for the whole world. And people, when confronted by Jesus, have two choices. They can either accept him or reject him. There is no other option.